Spurs will ask Bear County Commissioner's Court later today to approve four home games each of the next two seasons to be at locations other than the AT&T Center. It includes a total of four in Austin or as the request is stated with any 100 mile radius. Fans seem OK with games in Mexico and the Alamo Dome for the 50th anniversary celebration next year. But the four in Austin are concerning for some since Michael Dell is a new minority owner in the team and UT just built the brand new Moody Center that George Strait and Willie Nelson helped open this past weekend. The Spurs assure us this is part of a new and innovative marketing campaign where they can control the venues using home games. And after missing the playoffs of the last three straight seasons, it's a way to build their fan base from Mexico to Austin and everywhere in between. Here's what Spurs Sports and Entertainment CEO R.C. Buford had to say about the proposal. We are committed to finding new creative ways to purposefully engage and celebrate our fans from Mexico to Austin, continue to expand our regional fan base, we believe San Antonio is uniquely positioned from a cultural, geographic, and economic standpoint to serve as the anchor for this region. San Antonio has been home for five decades, and the organization will continue to innovate, positioning the Spurs to thrive in San Antonio for the next 50 years. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. We are hearing more about the Dallas Cowboys second round draft pick edge rusher Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. Just what the Cowboys needed to replace Randy Gregory who decided to sign with Denver. Take a look at the size of William and the speed the Cowboys received by using their 56 overall pick. He's 6'4", 261 and runs the 40 in 4.46. And here's something you may not have known. It was the Cowboys' own defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, who worked out Williams at Pro Day. Sounds like it is a match made in Cowboy heaven. Like Cowboys, Houston Texans also used their second round selection 37th overall to boost their defense when they selected Jalen Piter. And if I'm mispronouncing his last name, I apologize. It's a safety out of Baylor. Played five seasons for the Bears. He and the third overall pick in the draft, Derek Stingley Jr., should be able to contribute to the Texans defense immediately. Congratulations to the University Incarnate Word women's golf team. All five members named to the 2021-2022 Southland Women's Golf All-Conference teams. They're led by Ellen Nicholas, who's been the uh, Southland Conference Player of the Year on top of her first team selection. She's now headed the NCAA Regional Tournament up in Stillwater. Good luck. And time now for 42 and 75 degrees for now. Whether it's a Mother's Day gift or an appliance, even meaning the swap, we have a look at the May markdowns you don't want to miss. A next first look at Royal Security Breach, a Royal Security Breach, and how an intruder talked his way into some barracks near Windsor Castle. The British military is investigating what is being described as an extraordinary breach of security near one of the Queen's residences. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Royal Security Breach, an intruder talked his way into the barracks near Windsor Castle, even spending the night. The man reportedly posed as a priest, saying he was friends with the soldier's chaplain. After dining and drinking with them, the imposter was offered a bed for the night. It wasn't until the next morning that police were called. While the Queen was not in the castle for this incident, it's not the first time her security has been breached. Last year, a man with a crossbow was apprehended in the grounds of Windsor Castle castle and famously Michael Fagan managed to get to her bedroom at Buckingham Palace. Who are you? M my name is Michael. Recreated in this I scene from the Netflix the hit The Crown. What do you want if it's money? I don't want money. I don't want anything. I just want to talk to you. We'll have a live report from Windsor Castle coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Mother's Day is Sunday. Of course, a hug or a phone call makes moms smile. But if you're thinking of buying a gift, there are some discounts out there that may make you smile, too. Here's 12 on your side. It's Marilyn Moritz with a few of the best buys in the month of May. May means warmer days and hotter sales. Fake Mother's Day and Memorial Day deals. For Mother's Day, we'll see big sales on gift items, especially in the tech categories like smartwatches and fitness trackers. And Memorial Day, we'll see bigger ticket items go on sale like large appliances, mattresses, grills, and more. 
Consumer Reports tracks prices of its top tested products so they know when to buy. Has mom been eyeing a fitness tracker? The Fitbit Lux is marked down to $100 at Amazon, Best Buy, Fitbit, and Macy's. Tester scored it well for easy use, step counting, and heart rate accuracy. Next, smart watches. The Citizen CZ Smart is $100 off at Amazon and JCPenney. With holiday cookouts coming up, now could be the time to get that charcoal Kamado style grill. The Vision Kamado Professional Grill is now $799 at the Home Depot. It got excellent cooking scores and it's easy to clean. This can also be the month for a new mattress. If you're looking to buy a mattress right now, the best bet is to wait until closer to Memorial Day when all of the sales you see will get better by about 5 to 10%. The Avocado Green is one of CR's favorite inner spring mattresses. As the weather heats up and UAC is cool, the Frigidaire Gallery Air Conditioner is now $449 at Apt Electronics. And if you've been thinking about a new refrigerator or dishwasher, keep in mind that Memorial Day weekend you pay no sales tax on qualifying appliances that save energy and water. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Quick. Check of the roads with Trans Guide. Looking at this camera at Zarzamar Road, things look good there. Uh, There's a couple of construction spots earlier, but uh, overall things are looking good. Mike Ostrahage is here. What would otherwise be a thorny subject going into Mother's Day weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I liked it. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Thank you. I just hope these flowers don't kind of wilt in the heat on Mother's oh, Day. Goodness. So, because mom's beautiful roses, yes, those are absolutely gorgeous. But uh, yeah, it's going to definitely be a scorcher on Mother's Day as well as on Saturday. Let's start off with today and lots of clouds out there. Don't be surprised if you run into some mist this morning. There's nothing showing up on radar, nothing heavy enough for that. But there's just so much humidity out there. As a matter of fact, the dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere, um, are up in the 70s right now, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but these numbers are two, three, six degrees, even higher than what it was yesterday. So when you get up into the 70s with these numbers and you add a degree or two, doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a whole lot of difference. And we are going to continue to keep a lot of high humidity around here. Yeah, these numbers drop a little bit in the afternoon, but not a lot. Don't get uh, don't get your hopes up for any sort of big dry surge of air coming in here. Although by Saturday, it looks like we may see a uh, drop in the humidity, but the humidity is going to be staying high all the way through the next couple of days. Temperatures, we are going to be pretty steady, maybe fluctuating a degree or two in the next uh, few hours and keep a lot of clouds around this morning. We make it up into the mid and upper 70s by late in the morning. Some sunshine is going to start to peek on through here. So it, a nice breeze, not going to be as windy as yesterday, and then we'll see a bit more sunshine as we go into the latter part of the day and make it up to 87 for high temperature and then the clouds going to move back in here later on tonight. So here's the computer model through the afternoon. Again, we have a few uh, breaks in the clouds here and there. We'll have uh, some sunshine, especially off to the east. And then this evening, we got to watch this disturbance coming in here off the mountains of Mexico and crossing over the Rio Grande in toward Del Rio, in toward Rock Springs. And this is going to be into tonight. And there is the chance that some of those could become strong or potentially severe high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. And then they are going to be dying off later on tonight. Then it does look like tomorrow we'll have to watch out for that again, as well as on Thursday. So Storm Prediction Center right now has a couple of isolated, potentially severe storms from Eagle Pass up to Del Rio, large hail, strong winds. Can't rule out an isolated tornado, but it's not very likely. And then even going into tomorrow, that risk for couple of isolated severe storms moves a little bit further to the east and then on Thursday it covers about the eastern two thirds of our area and all the way kind of along 1037 and up to the northeast and this is during the morning hours and uh, in the afternoon on Thursday for an isolated strong to severe storm. Then we get a bit of a break in the action in behind that then things heat up. 80 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 87, partly sunny, so a bit more, especially off to the east. We have to watch out for some of those storms tonight as well as tomorrow night. And then on Thursday, by Thursday afternoon, 
Looks like things start to clear out. Now these numbers, high temperatures are still going to be on the, the hot side of things. Then with some drier air coming in here Friday, it's going to help to heat things up. And oh, Mike, we were all talking about it yesterday. Uh. And uh, Justin and Adam, Katie and Sarah and I, and uh, I know last night Adam was going 99, but a lot of the computer models are just looking at uh, uh, triple digits. So well, safety gonna, in numbers, Mike. We wow. will have, uh, we will have, <laughs> The, some drier air on Saturday, which yeah. would then allow temperatures to heat up that much more quickly. Drier <laughs> heats up more easily and uh, some more humidity on Sunday. So, so you wouldn't but, be shocked if we didn't hit it Saturday that we probably will no, hit no, it on we Sunday. Would hit, Saturday would be the best chance of hitting it with that oh, drier air. Gotcha. In here. Okay. And the drier heats up more easily. So, okay. um, but yeah, it's going to be hot this weekend. Triple digits. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll prepare. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 452, about 75 degrees. And coming up next, Marvel gets ready for the nationwide debut of the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Welcome back, Five Till. This week we're diving into the madness of Marvel's latest Doctor Strange film. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Things just got out of hand. We're going back into the universe, or rather, multiverse of Doctor Strange this week with the debut of the sequel, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And controversy, before the film even opens, it won't be shown in several Middle Eastern countries because one of the main characters is gay, something star Benedict Cumberbatch says is crazy in this day and age. There is intolerance in the world and we need to be wary of that and it makes this character's inclusion even more important. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is in theaters on Thursday. It's right there in front of us, we just... You know, we take it. Saying yes to playing a corrupt police officer in the new HBO series We Own This City was not an easy decision for Daryl Britt Gibson. The actor who got his start on The Wire tells me police have caused him and his family a lot of pain. I had to have a conversation with my mother like I was a five-year-old asking her for permission to do so. Um, she is, um, you know, her brother, um, who I'm named after, was shot and killed by the police. He says he's also been assaulted by police and doesn't even know if he'll watch the show, but he's proud of the conversation it's sparking. New episodes of We Own This City air Monday nights on HBO. And happy birthday to Christina Hendricks. The Emmy-nominated Mad Men star is 47 today, while the West Wing Emmy nominee, Dulé Hill, is also 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans and ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 457 and 75 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, uh, more details on if the Supreme Court is truly poised to strike down the landmark Roe versus Wade case. Plus, Google is upgrading its flight price tracking and ways to find hotels. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Steven is now in studio. We'll check on uh, traffic around town as we get into the very beginning of your Tuesday morning commute. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police continue to search for the suspect responsible for allegedly shooting and killing a man at a city's West Side convenience store late last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What police know so far? I'm ABC's Justin Finch here in Washington following an apparent leak of a Supreme Court draft opinion that could have major consequences for abortion rights. More on that coming up. Outside with live cam this morning, tons of humidity. We'll see if there's another chance of storms in the forecast and get ready for what could be the hottest weekend of the year so far. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 3rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Tuesday. Uh, yeah, we're gearing up for the weekend for Mother's Day, which apparently is going to be a very hot one. It's going to be a broiler around here, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hot. The hottest, memory serves me correctly, that we've been so far uh, this year. We hit 97 degrees. We're going to be topping that this weekend. First of all, this morning, we are starting off in pretty darn warm out there. Pretty darn hot, I guess you could say. 75 degrees, so we are more than 10 degrees above normal. And then you look at the bottom number and the dew points at 70, which means we got a bunch of humidity, 84% humidity. But when that bottom number is above 60 and getting up into the 70s, it's really, really humid. And we are going to make it up into the mid and even upper 80s later on this afternoon. The aquifer yesterday's reading did drop down three tenths of a foot. Of course, we are still in stage two water restrictions and the allergens mold is still on the high side from some of the rain that we had Sunday night into yesterday. 
Hopefully we're finally done with the oak season. It's low. Same thing with pecan as well as grass. Now we've got a lot of moisture down here at the surface. We have a lot of moisture upstairs in the atmosphere as well with this uh, kind of gray shade and the water vapor imagery shows the moisture in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. And what that uh, kind of means is we're not going to see just that beautiful blue sky out there, which is what we usually see when we have the dark shade of gray or that kind of tannish shade up there to the northeast. So this is going to help out with the cloud cover around here today. We will have a few holes in the clouds, though, by later on this afternoon. So cloudy, mist, warm and humid this morning. Again, don't be surprised if you see a little uh, mist out there this morning. And then later on, partly sunny. We will have a few thunderstorms popping up later on tonight out to the west in some of our western counties. Some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side and then the rest of the week hot and humid and a few evening thunderstorms tomorrow night as well as on Thursday, Thursday even in the morning hours and during the day potentially severe. Then we get into Friday and the weekend. Plenty of sunshine and yep, it is going to be hot. We are looking at a really good chance of hitting triple digits once we get into the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be really hot for Mother's Day. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning to Mr. Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Well, traffic's looking pretty cool right now, but actually some quiet roads, pavement, and just a few cars right now. Let's get a closer look at Transguide 281 at Bassey. Really not seen a whole lot of activity this morning, so if you have to travel in the next few moments, you will basically have the roads to yourself. Just remember to be kind to your fellow drivers out there, but uh, we did have a crash that was reported around 3 this morning over here off Loop 410 all of the southbound lanes at Ray Ellison Boulevard. I was just checking the Transguide cameras and the text dot does not know does no no longer that is has that crash listed, but it was causing some sort of restricted flow in those southbound lanes of Loop 410. So uh, just watch out there. But other than that, as we get the wide view of the metro area at 503, we're not spotting delays, slowdowns, or anything that could cause any impact for your morning drive. Traveling to the Alamo City, well, we have your inbound times for you. The journey from Bernie, I-10 eastbound, looking at a 25-minute drive time 26 minutes if you're traveling on 281 southbound coming in from Bull Verde and a 25 minute drive time I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So no worries there. But one last look around town 37 at Pecan Valley. It is a new week, so that means new closures. We'll tell you what that means for a commute coming up a little bit later on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police continue to search for the suspect responsible for shooting and killing a man at a West Side convenience store late last night. This happened at West Commerce and 24th Street. Sarah Costa is live at that location. And Sarah, do police know how this all started? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Well, that's exactly what they're investigating. They are trying to figure out how this started. Now, police were able to talk to some witnesses who say that they saw two men talking at this convenience store before the shooting actually happened. And SAPD was called around 1015 for a man who had been shot at this location. When they arrived, they found a man in his 30s with two gunshot wounds, one to the leg, another to the torso. He was rushed to University Hospital where he later died from his injuries. Police say the shooter ran off and has still not been found at this time. Right now, police have little information on the suspect. All they know at this time is that that shooter was a man and police have not released the identity of the man who died from this shooting. Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Today is your last day to vote early in the May 7th election. So on the ballot are several proposals, including one that would increase the homestead exemption amount from $25,000 to $40,000. If this is approved, it is expected to save homeowners an average of $176 on their property tax bill. We have more details about the ballot on our website at KSAT.com. Now to the U.S. Supreme Court, an apparent leak of a majority draft opinion indicates the court appears ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. News of that leak is getting strong reaction from both supporters and protesters. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with the latest. This morning, tensions high outside the U.S. Supreme Court following a leaked draft opinion in a case that could determine the future of Roe versus Wade and abortion rights across the country. The protest coming from the website Politico reporting it obtained documents from a person familiar with the court's proceedings. Those documents labeled a first draft of the opinion in a case challenging Mississippi's ban on abortion after 15 weeks. But in that draft, Justice Samuel Alito, the opinion's apparent author, writes Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. 
It was circulated in the court as a first draft by Justice Alito in February, dated February 10th. Uh, it is possible there have been some changes since then. The draft opinion also citing Planned Parenthood versus Casey. The 1992 case affirmed Roe's finding of a constitutional right to abortion services. Justice Alito on the court 6-3 conservative majority writing, we hold that Roe and Casey must be over. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. This ought to be a decision left to every American to make for themselves, not a decision that is limited, that is restricted, a freedom that is taken away by a Supreme Court. Planned Parenthood tweeting, let's be clear, this is a draft opinion. It's outrageous. It's unprecedented, but it's not final. Abortion is your right and is still legal. But the anti-abortion rights group Susan B. Anthony list writing, if the draft opinion made public tonight is the final opinion of the court, we wholeheartedly applaud the decision. The draft opinion leak comes as states nationwide have begun passing restrictive abortion measures. Many congressional Democrats now calling for Congress to pass legislation to protect abortion rights by codifying them into federal law. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And time now, it's 5.08 and about 75 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, Airbnb changing its COVID refund policy, what that means for your future vacation bookings. And details why a West Side restaurant almost failed its inspection report. And outside with live cam as we look at San Antonio International Airport, there are quite a few cars on 410 already. We'll check back in with Steven and get ready for a very, very warm Mother's Day weekend details to come. Restaurant, restaurant cleanliness and certifications. Those concerns taking us behind the kitchen door. Metro Health says a restaurant on the far west side was one point away from failing. And we're talking about Grand Tequila Restaurant and Cantina. It's on Highway 151 and Ingram Road. Now it needs a new inspection. Late March, it got a score of 70. Now, inspectors said they found a dirty ice chest with cooked tortillas inside. Metro Health also said workers were touching cell phones and other items, then handling the masa for tortillas. Health inspectors say all restaurant workers need to wash their hands before handling food. During the inspection, food handler certificates were not presented. In its report, Metro Health says the manager claimed they were in the office but could not get to the office that day. And don't forget, we are also keeping track of the best scores among restaurants in San Antonio. We're going to have a list of businesses with perfect inspection scores. You can check them out in our Behind the Kitchen Door section on KZ.com. 513, about 75 degrees. And still ahead, Google adding new features for flights and hotels. We're going to show you how it works. Apple Music now expanding to even more streaming devices you might already own. Who do you think you are? Canceling plans? Commanding a room? Being your own biggest fan? Who said you could do that? Say no to settling, no to compromising, yes to getting all of the above. Who? No, really. Tell us, who do you think you are? Oh, you're you. And TJ Maxx is where you can afford to be you to the max. Discomfort back there. Instead of using aloe or baby wipes or powders, Try the cooling, soothing relief of Preparation H because your derriere deserves expert care. Preparation H, get comfortable with it. In the Middle Ages, the remedy for tooth decay was to kiss a donkey. Hurry up! Today, there's a better way to help keep decay away. Act with fortifying fluoride, it can make teeth up to four times stronger. Excellent. Act, long live your teeth. 516 Airbnb ending its refund policy for cancellations due to COVID-19. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, get ready to say goodbye to COVID refunds on Airbnb. As of May 31st, customers will no longer be able to get their money back if they cancel for virus-related reasons. The policy has been in place since March of 2020. Google is rolling out some new travel-related updates. There's a new tool that lets users track flight prices between two cities for up to six months. There's also detailed information about places to stay within certain driving distances. 
You just need an address or a landmark to get started. And finally, Apple Music is now available on the Roku platform. Apple Music subscribers can now access the app on any Roku device, including streaming, TVs, and speakers, and soundbars. The move could help Apple find new subscribers, maybe even sway some away from Spotify. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. Tuesday morning, 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasos. I say it's been a pretty nice morning so far. 517, we're just seeing some quiet roads and thankfully not a whole lot to talk about, even though I like to talk a lot, but we'll keep it pretty short here. Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road, we're really not seeing a whole lot of activity there. As we get that wide look at the map, again, just lots of green on the screen. We did have a crash there off of 410 near Ray Ellison Boulevard. Thankfully, that has been cleared out and we are seeing some smooth commutes this morning, but be prepared because we do have some road work continuing it this week. Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio painting operations will be continuing up until Monday, May 9th. Keep in mind that is overnight 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers, what you can expect is an alternating main lane closure in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. And as always, open that camera app and power up your phone because we have that QR code. Scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that will have the latest on anything that could be impacting your commute. Of course, closures that are also also taking place in your area and I did update the list yesterday so all these lists of closures are current on the KSAT traffic page guys very good thank, thank you Stephen thank yeah. you Stephen this is a, a remarkable photo yeah I like it just one of those because it's such a cool shot and looks like that thing's posing for the camera red-shouldered mm -hmm. hawk uh, wow just majestic looking if you are gonna be out you know, looking for birds and doing a little uh, ornithology and maybe just kind of taking a walk this weekend. Make sure you have plenty of water, plenty of shade and plenty of sunscreen. Well, sunscreen, as the experts say, on any day, but uh, especially this weekend because we're going to have a lot more sunshine. It's going to be just blazing, blazing hot out there. We've got a, a lot of clouds and you may run into some mist around here this morning. They haven't seen any reports of it as of yet. Uh, Steven, did you run into any mist or anything coming to work? Okay, so nobody here did but just be on the lookout for that. Temperatures are even warmer than what they were yesterday. The normal average low is 63, so we are 10 to 15 degrees above that. Everybody's in the mid 70s on average, and these numbers, dew points, measure of moisture in the atmosphere, are actually up a little bit compared to yesterday, and you get to 74, and that's where, yeah, the windows start dripping, your glasses are going to be fogging up, you go from air conditioning outside, and we're not really going to see any break in the humidity for the next couple of days. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning. Temperatures will stay pretty steady, maybe uh, fluctuating a degree or two, and then we make it into the upper 70s, 80 by noon. Some sunshine is going to start to squeeze through, and we'll have a bit more by later on this afternoon. That's just going to help to really heat things up. 87 degrees, and of course, enough humidity to make it feel warmer than that, and then we'll have the clouds move back in here later on tonight. Now, one thing you have to be on the lookout later on tonight is well out to the west for a few showers and thunderstorms to develop. There's a disturbance that's going to be coming off the mountains of Mexico, and some of those storms, the potential is there from Storm Prediction Center that they could become severe with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. Isolated tornado, of course, it's not very likely, but can't be completely ruled out with those storms. They may linger into the evening hours and perhaps a couple of showers trying to work their way off to the east. And then we're going to be doing that all over again tomorrow night as well as into Thursday. So we'll have a few of these showers and thunderstorms around here, primarily in the hill country tomorrow night, and then a couple of them even during the day on Thursday, and then again uh, later Thursday evening, potentially severe storms. This is all kind of along a uh, a bit of a cool front, if you will. It's going to be moving on through here. It's not going to cool us now. As a matter of fact, we're going the opposite direction, but it will get rid of some of the humidity by Friday and Saturday. That, though, in turn, because dry air heats up, heats up a lot more easily than moist air does, is going to allow temperatures to skyrocket as we go in toward the weekend. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, and a high temperature makes it up into the uh, mid to upper 80s later on, 87 to be specific. Still about uh, 15, 10 to 15 degrees above normal, and we stay on the hot side through the weekend. Again, those isolated evening thunderstorms tonight out to the west, tomorrow night, mainly to the west, and then on Thursday, an okay chance for rain on Thursday, 96 Friday, and yep, broke down, had to do it 100.
Well, you didn't have to. <laughs> well, you know, looking I mean, at... I know, I know. You've been 99 and a half. Make it feel better. <laughs> you know, it, isn't it psychological? It is. The, it the, is. The whole is. difference between 99 and 100. Yes. Because, you know, in your backyard, you may be well up into the hundreds and mm -hmm. out toward the Rio Grande Valley. But, uh, yeah, just a lot of indications. I wonder if the computer would let you do 99.5. Just to see, if, I mean, it's almost the same number of characters. Would that right? make you happy today if I no, did that? No, 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 I mean, maybe. I mean, it's worth yeah. a shot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm more worried about Steph. Uh, 522, 75 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Florence Pugh again. Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry, Darling. Pick three numbers this morning 715 Fireball 2. I don't see 100 anywhere on this one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> daily four numbers 3778 Fireball 7. Yes, 5, 7, 15, 20, 22, 26. And your Texas two step, 12, 15, 16, 35, bonus ball 28. Your Powerball numbers, no hundreds here either. 18, 27, 33, 39, 44, Powerball 8, Power Play 5. Good luck. Now to a new film by, directed by Olivia Wilde, plus Allison Pill stars in a movie highlighting depression. Here seeing as David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. All of you wives. With you all the time. We men, we ask a lot. Can't you see? We ask for strength. <laughs> to be. Food at home, a house clean. With you all the time. And discretion above all else. Boys and their toys. At least we know they're getting work done. A 1950s housewife worries her husband's mysterious company is hiding disturbing secrets in the first trailer for Don't Worry Darling, starring Florence Pugh and Harry Styles and directed by Olivia Wilde. Don't Worry Darling opens in theaters September 23rd. Mom showed me your suicide note. Thank you for putting me on it. You're welcome. I was like two thirds down the list. It was like I was an afterthought. I just didn't want it to go to your head. Of course not. This wasn't a mistake. No. None of this strikes me as a cry for help. Allison Pill stars in All My Puny Sorrows, about a family with a history of suicidal depression, based on the award-winning novel by Miriam Tays. It's very rare that you get the chance as an actor to sit down and have somebody tell you all the actual inner motivations and sort of inner thoughts of your character. So that was a real gift. All My Puny Sorrows is available now on digital and VOD platforms. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 75 degrees. And still ahead on DMSA, it appears the Supreme Court plans to overturn Roe versus Way by the end of June. We'll tell you why. Get ready to spend a little bit more on summer camp. How much extra you might need to save. And ahead on GMSA at 6, are you looking for a new career where we're going to have some tips to help make your resume resonate? Making headlines this morning, could this mark the end of Roe v. Wade? We'll have reactions on a draft opinion leaked from the U.S. Supreme Court. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are starting off humid at 74 degrees and we're already looking forward to a very warm weekend. Yes, we are downright hot. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, May 3rd. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's going to warm up quite a bit at the end of the week, but let's go ahead and check with Mike to see what we can expect today. Yeah, going to be very uh, warm and humid today. We're starting off even warmer and more humid than what we were yesterday. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here, looking over there toward the airport and uh, the humidity, both the temperature and the humidity. That number temperature, the dew point temperature are up a couple of degrees compared to this time yesterday and not anything we really needed to see. And actually that number 75 degrees is warmer than what the normal highest warmest low temperature is when we get into the hottest part of the, the year, which is the first couple of weeks of August, obviously well above normal by a good uh, about 12, 13 degrees. Now tonight throughout the day, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around here and have uh, some sunshine in the afternoon. The atmosphere gets really, really unstable. And tonight we have a chance for a couple of strong to potentially severe storms out in our western counties. L large hail and strong winds are going to be the biggest threats with that. An isolated tornado, yes, is possible, although not not very likely. This is primarily confined to our extreme western counties tonight with the disturbance coming off the mountains of Mexico, but then we'll have to be on the lookout for that again tomorrow night as well as on Thursday. Mold is on the high side. This was yesterday's reading. Of course, the update account is going to be coming out in a couple of hours and throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 80 at noon. 
We'll have a bit more sunshine this afternoon, 87 degrees and humidity. Southeasterly wind, not overly breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And jumping ahead in toward the weekend, just to give you a little hint of what to expect. Don't know if you want to look at that or not, but we're looking at triple digit temperatures this weekend. It is going to be a sizzler. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on in the highway, sir? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that triple digit, Mike, but uh, I'm feeling a little bit better about this traffic situation. Let's go ahead and take a look around town. Things have been quiet so far, but we are still pretty young at this hour. 410 at Broadway. There's 281 at Bassey. Not a lot of folks getting their morning started early with us, but there are some. And if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, Thankfully, there won't be anything that would cause any delays for your early morning drive, but let's take a look here at the map because we aren't spotting any slowdowns, but we know that there is still some construction spots as we told you the last half hour of the newscast, but as we are inching closer to 6 a.m., no visible problems just yet. So let's take a look at those travel times. If you are heading into San Antonio, Seguin looking pretty green right now. 29 minutes on I-10 westbound, 21 if you're traveling in on 87 Lavernia coming up in those northbound lanes and a 28 minute drive drive time heading up on 181 from Floridasville. No worries there, no delays, but again, the morning is still pretty young at this hour. 1604 at Bandera, 410 at Broadway. We'll have a look at more construction spots coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Seth. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's detectives are investigating an overnight death as a homicide. They say they found a man shot to death inside a home on Loop 107 near Highway 87. This is in southeast Bear County near Atkins. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand this investigation has been going on for several hours now. Well, that's right. Uh, about 1.30 is when detectives got the call out here uh, in Southeast Bear County. And right now they say they still don't know a whole lot about what happened. What they do know is that they found a man dead inside this home here. Uh, it's pretty dark here, so it's hard to see a lot of what is going on. But we have seen detectives going around the house with flashlights looking at the outside of the home. But inside is where they found the man. I have some video also to show you to maybe give you a little better look. Uh, they say that man who they believe believe is in his late 20s was in a bedroom. Uh, he was found with uh, several gunshot wounds. Now they do have a woman who they are talking to as a witness. They have taken her downtown to their offices to question her as a witness. Right now they say they don't have any information on any suspects or any vehicle that was seen in this area, nor do they have any idea how the shooting came to be, whether there was a disturbance or anything. What they do know is that a relative who lives fairly close to here is the one who called them after 1.30 this morning. And so their investigation very much in the beginning stages right now. All they know, a man is shot to death. No other information at this point. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Roe versus Wade might be coming to an end sooner than later. That's according to a draft of a U.S. Supreme Court opinion. Politico says it has obtained and verified. And as CNN's Amy Kiley reports the news and how it came out is prompting a lot of reactions. We will not go back. Women in the U.S. could lose their federal right to have abortions by the end of June. Politico has obtained this draft of a U.S. Supreme Court opinion. It suggests the justices are poised to overturn Roe v. Wade this term. Nothing's final yet, but demonstrators on both sides are taking to the streets. It looks like we're going to finally see justice for the unborn in this country. Sometimes justices change their votes before opinions are finalized. But if this opinion stands as written, states alone would regulate abortions. We will see uh, 26 states move to ensure that we no longer have control over our own bodies. The CEO of Planned Parenthood says she's basing that prediction on current state laws and debates. Other progressives are lamenting the draft opinion, while many conservatives rejoice. A parallel reaction is outrage over how the draft came out. I predicted it would happen, but I sure as hell didn't predict it would happen this way. Analysts say it's an unprecedented breach of Supreme Court secrecy and confidentiality. Congress can pass a law reinstating federal abortion rights, but Democrats need more votes to do that. And Republicans don't want to do that. So this will likely be a rallying cry for the midterm elections. I think that the protest that you're seeing in front of the Supreme Court is just the beginning. I'm Amy Kiley reporting.
The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol Hill insurrection wants to speak to three Republican congressmen. The three GOP lawmakers received letters are Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona, Mo Brooks of Alabama, and Ronnie Jackson of Texas. The three were sent letters asking they voluntarily cooperate with the ongoing probe. The committee says it's gathering information from members who attended meetings at the White House and talked to President Trump before and during the riots. The Pentagon has found an array of software vulnerabilities at dozens of defense contractors. It's part of the year-long vulnerability disclosure pilot program, which aims to find such vulnerabilities before hackers can exploit them. The Pentagon has been conducting such efforts internally for years. Now it's hoping to expand that to smaller contractors that don't have the resources to do so themselves. The pilot program involved 41 companies. Some of them were not aware their IT systems were publicly accessible. An estimated 300,000 companies work with the government on defense contracts. Hackers from Russia and China are widely considered the most dangerous. Comedian Mike Birbiglia will fill in for late night host Jimmy Kimmel starting tonight after Kimmel revealed he has COVID. Kimmel took to Twitter to announce his diagnosis and the comedian's role as guest host. He wrote he and his family were feeling fine, was double vaxxed and boosted. Kimmel Live is taped in L.A. where COVID-19 cases have increased recently. However, COVID hospitalizations in L.A. County have remained flat. And time now, 538 and 74 degrees for now. Saving on smartphones, phone bills and app subscriptions. We'll tell you five ways you can help your budget. And taking a look outside with a live cam, starting humid at 74 degrees. It's going to be pretty warm today and even warmer as we get to the end of the week. We'll be right back. The price for nearly everything continues to rise. When it comes to personal technology, you may be overspending and draining your budget. As Jen Sullivan reports, financial experts say now is the time to check how much you're spending on your favorite gadgets, phone bills, and app subscriptions. Inflation is at a 40-year high. With the price of nearly everything going up, your personal tech budget could be taking a hit. The amount of money that we're spending on tech is getting bigger every single year, and it makes sense, right? We're working remote, we're doing things kind of on the go. Personal finance coach Julie Almantaveras has these five tips to cut down on the tech expenses. Number one, ask for loyalty discounts. She says call your phone service provider every six months to see if you can get a better deal. Number two, limit the number of devices you own and those pricey upgrades. Don't feel pressured to buy the latest and greatest because oftentimes they're layered with things that you probably don't even need. Number three, trim your wireless bills. The plans served up by the big carriers aren't always the cheapest, so explore other companies with budget phone plans. The difference between the plans can be very big, a prepaid plan versus a normal plan that can be in the hundreds of dollars. Number four, cut down on the streaming or rotate plans. You may not need them all together at once. And finally, number five, cancel those online subscriptions from apps to online tools and services. Look at what you can cancel now. Kind of keep a streamline limited and save a lot of money along the way. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Well, all this adds up. I mean, one reason Netflix is kind of freaking out as a company right now, they are hemorrhaging subscribers. A lot of people cutting back. Yeah, well, because a lot of people have other options as well. That's also true. 543 on your Tuesday morning, 74 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you how your team can take advantage of a special free gym program this summer. And welcome back. It's 545 in your morning consumer headlines. The cost of summer camp is expected to skyrocket this year. Experts say you can expect to pay up to 15% more to get your kids out of your hair. A lot of that's because of inflation. However, it's also due to good old supply and demand. More families more than ever are looking to send their kids off to get the interactions they missed out on when many camps closed down. Now about 26 million kids are expected to enroll in camps this summer. Planet Fitness says teens get fit for free at their facilities this summer. The National Gym Chain just announced the High School Summer Pass Initiative. The new initiative allows high schoolers to work out at any of its locations this summer break for free. Planet Fitness says any teen ages 14 to 19 can participate. All they have to do is visit a Planet Fitness location or go to the website and sign up for this program. The High School Summer Pass Initiative kicks off May 16th and last through August 31st. Great deal. Great deal. And check it out. There's a new product for cereal lovers who want breakfast themed footwear. 
is a collection of crocs inspired by cinnamon toast crunch cocoa puffs honey nut cheerios and tricks they're available in classic and all terrain and are designed with berries sugary cinnamon squares and cereal logos and right now only the cinnamon toast crunch crocs are available however they should all be in stores by july they cost between 45 and 70 dollars per pair somebody will buy them I, they're, I think they're cute. You're right? <laughs> yeah. 547. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I don't think you'll be buying cereal Crocs, right? I won't admit that publicly. <laughs> but I won't, but I'm not going to say, never say never, right? But I did get a craving for cereal just now, so oh, you're right. maybe Me it did too. the trick. I don't mm. know. Uh, tricks are for kids anyways. But let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways at this hour. 281 at Nakoma. Not a whole lot to talk about here. Thankfully, it has been a pretty quiet morning at 37 at 410. Uh, we have been seeing some pretty empty roadways, but keep in mind the morning is just getting started, so we can likely see we can expect to see some problems out there as morning does persist. But let's get a wide look at the map because we do have a stall here over off State Highway 151 right there in the eastbound lanes near West Overhills Boulevard. It's not causing any issues, but make sure you check your vehicles and make sure you plan ahead because we have some work that's being done overnight uh, here off 1604 North Central San Antonio. Now keep in mind there's gonna be two things going on there, concrete removal and a and traffic signal work. We're going to see that uh, started on Monday, but it should be wrapping up this Friday, May 6. It's from 8 and 9 in the morning, pardon me, to 3 in the afternoon. You can expect the eastbound and westbound turnaround closure there at Loop 1604 and Lock Hill Selma Road. But of course, that information is on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. But other than that, traffic here moving nice and smooth. Guys? Okay, back to the crock. That raises the, mm -hmm. the classic question of form versus function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know you're talking about Crocs, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's like Stephen's not admitting to having them, but right. they're very comfortable, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Crocs and socks, extremely comfortable. And they, that's if you, wow. If Crocs and socks. If you have that at home, if that's your yeah. situation, picks or it didn't happen. I didn't. I did not say that. <laughs> you're not going to admit that. He was just talking. I'm about just it. saying. Right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No. It's free country, right? Yeah. Next half hour, we argue fanny packs. Fanny it is oh, no, we don't. <laughs> oh, saying, no, we no, don't. I'm just saying the, the functionality of it. A again, if you've got that added I accessory. didn't. No, look, look, at, look to <laughs> look, those pretty flowers. flowers. Mike, look right in the <laughs> camera and say you don't have those. Look at the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't those good? Blooming Gewürztraminer is out there. So um, I don't know what kind of flowers those are, but. That's my go to yeah, word. All right. Mark is just over there <laughs> doubled over in pain. So uh, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning and it is very, very warm and humid, even more so than what it was yesterday. And also keep an eye out for some mist out there. But if you have a pair of Crocs, then you won't have to worry about that, um, you know, because they'll keep your feet somewhat dry. 75 degrees here in town, 73 comfort. And 78 still at Stinson, so extremely warm. These numbers are 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And we talk about dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. You get above 60, you feel the humidity. You get above 70, then it gets really, really humid. And 74, 73, 74 is usually when you really start, you know, the, your glasses fog up going from air conditioning outside. Windows may kind of drip a little bit with some of that humidity, and it's going to stay very humid as well. As far as any fog, uh, where there's not any wind right now, you want to be on the lookout. We're not seeing any reports of anything as of yet. We've got a, a bit of a breeze out there, but just kind of watch out with all this extra humidity. We keep a lot of clouds around throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures will stay pretty steady, may fluctuate a degree or two, and then we'll start to see the sun squeezing on through here by late morning. We get up into the upper 70s and 80 at noon. Then we are going to be topping off at 87, so sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. And of course, it will feel warmer than that 87 with some of that humidity out there. And it's like I said, going to be staying very humid for the next few days. We do see a break in the humidity by Friday and Saturday, which is kind of a good news, bad news type situation. More on that in a second. T today, like I said, some sunshine out there. Then tonight we have to watch out for some of those thunderstorms to develop out there to the uh, west. Primarily, they will stay out there to the west. A few may try some of those showers to ease off to the east uh, slightly more, uh, slightly throughout the evening, I should say. But also, we have to watch out for some of those to become strong, potentially severe with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. Then that's going to be the situation again Wednesday night, especially in the hill country. And then going into Thursday, some of those may last Wednesday night into Thursday. And then Thursday also, we have to watch out for a few of those showers and some of those uh, thunderstorms up 
up to the, uh, especially in the northeastern half of our viewing area. So then after that, we get the drier air trying to move on in here, and that's going to help to really heat things up. 80 at noon today, most of the cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 87 later on, so we'll be about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Same thing tomorrow, Thursday, and then we really crank up the heat Friday into the weekend. We have those chances for some storms out to the west tonight. Hill Country tomorrow night, Thursday, probably the better chance for some rain. And then we're looking at triple digit temperatures by Saturday and Sunday. We get some dry air coming in here Friday and Saturday, and that allows things to really heat up there. So you may not need socks with your Crocs. <laughs> oh boy. Well, yes. we've really touched on a nerve here. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 552, about 74 degrees. And the guitarist behind the iconic riff of Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train is the subject of a new documentary. We're going to get a first look next. Pick three numbers, 715, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 3778, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 7, 15, 20, 22, 26. Pick this two step, 12, 15, 16, 35, bonus ball 28. And your Powerball numbers. 18, 27, 33, 39, 44, Powerball 8, Power Play 5. Good luck. The guitarist who co-founded Quiet Riot and fueled the birth of Ozzy Osbourne's solo career is remembered in Randy Rhodes' Reflections of a Guitar Icon. You have to see this band called Quiet Riot. He's like nothing you've ever seen before. It was this huge sound, and the sound was coming straight from the guitar player. Well, I've always been fascinated with the legend of Randy Rhodes. I always considered him an enigma. There was a lot of mystery surrounding his character and not a lot of people know his story. The film features archival performances and conversations with Rhodes. One of my favorite sounds was when I first heard Mountain and Leslie West with that harmonics and the thing. I, mean, I just thought it was the greatest thing. Listening to him speak about so many elements um, and pieces of his life that it was a a perfect situation. I mean, when I found those recordings, it was just like, we have to put them in. The documentary is narrated by fellow guitarist Tracy Gunn. Randy Rhodes will never die in my heart. He's, he's there forever. He was a small guy with such an enormous talent. Rhodes was killed along with two other people in a Florida plane crash in March 1982, but his music and legacy live on. Randy was the light, and everyone gravitated to the light. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know about the election underway. Today is your last day to cast a ballot early. Election day is Saturday. That includes some bonds, constitutional amendments, and special proposals. There are also some propositions that will involve property taxes. We lay it all out for you on KSAT.com. A scary scene overnight at a Northside apartment. One woman reportedly tied up, another woman robbed. We'll have details coming up in the next hour of GMSA. Let's check Transguide right now. Traffic coming at you and going away from you at 410 back there at Callahan. There's 410 at Fredericksburg, not much further down the road. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up at the top of the hour. Bear County detectives say they have a murder, but not a whole lot of answers at this point. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A man found dead in his home. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, some people witnessed some mist out there, but overall, just a humid morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, May 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Happy Tuesday. Hope you had a wonderful Monday. Uh, here and there, I saw a little bit of showers out there, so that was kind of nice for Monday. That's right. Pretty typical spring pattern. Mike is here with a sizzling secret about the upcoming uh, Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, it's going to, you know, we were talking yesterday how it was just going to stay hot this week and get mm -hmm. hotter in toward the weekend. And yeah, some of the, uh, the latest numbers look like it's going to be even hotter this weekend. Are we talking record-breaking heat? Yeah, we'll uh, either tie or get 
close to uh, some record high temperatures this weekend. And uh, I think we've got a pretty good shot at hitting our first triple digit readings as well. A lot of clouds out there obviously this morning. And like Steph was talking about, you may run into just a, a bit of mist. Didn't see anything when I was driving in earlier this morning, but uh, there could be some out. There's nothing obviously showing up on radar right now. Temperatures are way, way above normal. The normal average high, uh, low temperature, pardon me, is 63 right now. So we are in the mid 70s, actually closer to the normal high temperature, which is 83 degrees. And we're going to be topping that later on. Molds on the high side. This is from yesterday's count. The updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And temperatures this morning will stay basically steady. May fluctuate a degree or two here or there. We have plenty of clouds around this morning. Then we'll start to see some sunshine squeezing through by late morning and by noon, getting up to 80 and southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour just continues obviously to pull in all that humidity and then we'll top off at 87 degrees later on this afternoon, which of course is on the, the warm side, obviously. And then going into tonight, we have to be on the lookout for a couple of showers and thunderstorms to develop well out to the west and some of those storm prediction center has the very small risk, kind of an isolated, uh, potentially severe, strong to severe storm, high winds and hail being the biggest threats and that's for our western counties. So we'll be on the lookout for that later on tonight. Once again, tomorrow night, which will cover a bit more of the uh, hill country and then going into Thursday, we also have a chance for some uh, rain. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes and also talk about those hot temperatures for the weekend. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? All is well, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways right now. 6 a.m. We are seeing 410 at Broadway. Not really a whole lot of activity out there as we get a wider look at Transguide. Take a drive around town. 37 at Houston. You will have the roads to yourself at this hour. Just remember to take it easy. No need to rush out the door, but make sure that your vehicles are working properly because as morning has gone on, we've been seeing just a few more stalls out there. Uh, this is the uh, one we told you about a little bit earlier off State Highway 151 right there at Westover Hill. Boulevard. It's not been causing problems, but check this out. We have another one over here off of I-10 westbound at Wurzbach Road. So again, check those vehicles and make sure you move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights or emergency lights out there. Let's get a wide look at the map. 603. No other problems to report just yet, but we can expect that to change if people are as more people get out on the roadways. That is, uh, let's take a look at those travel times because there's no need to rush at this hour if your destination is the Alamo City. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 28 minutes minutes on 37 northbound. We're looking at 19 minutes on Highway 90 traveling eastbound from Castroville and little time from Lytle with 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So no trouble there, but we are seeing some quiet roads as I mentioned as we start this new Tuesday morning, but we'll take a look at some closures that'll be coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Make sure you have your phones handy. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Fair County sheriffs are hoping one woman might provide all the answers they need about a deadly shooting. It happened overnight at a home in southeast Bear County. Katrina Weber is live along Loop 107 off of Highway 87. And Katrina, how does that woman figure into this case? Well, detectives are calling her a witness to this case. They believe she was one of the only other people inside this home when that man was shot and killed this morning. I wanted to give you a look at the video because it's very dark out here, hard to see what's going on. But uh, Detectives got the call around 1.30 this morning and got to this home. They did find a man who they say appears to be in his late 20s, dead from gunshot wounds. Now they say a relative who lives close by is the one who called them to this home. And again, they took that woman into custody as a witness. They plan to question her downtown to try to get some more information about what happened. At this point, they don't even know how the shooting came to be, whether there was a, a disturbance here or what happened exactly leading up to that shooting. Shooting. But again, a man found dead inside his home. Detectives say they did find him in the bedroom of the home. And so they are at the very beginning stages of their investigation, trying to piece this all together. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man is dead after he was shot twice at a Westside convenience store late last night. Let's continue to search for the person responsible. Sarah Coast is live at West Commerce and 24th Street where that shooting happened with the very latest. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. And to give you guys a better idea of where the shooting took place, we're actually right across the street from Our Lady of the Lake University. But let's take a look at the video from 
earlier when the police were still on scene. Now, SAPD says they got the call around 1015 for a man who had been shot at this location. When they arrived, they found a man in his 30s with two gunshot wounds, one to his leg, another to the torso. He was rushed to University Hospital, where he later died from those injuries. Police say the shooter ran off and still has not been found at this time. Right now, police have little information on the suspect, just that he is a man. Now, police were able to interview some witnesses who told police they saw the victim and the shooter talking at this convenience store. But police still have not found the suspect at this time, and their investigation continues. Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New reports that the Supreme Court is poised to strike down the landmark Roe versus Wade decision that has guaranteed the right to abortion for nearly half a century. That's according to a leaked draft opinion from February published online by Politico. Word of the potential ruling sparked immediate outrage with activists for and against abortion rights gathering overnight at the Supreme Court. We're going to have much more on this coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. Today is your last day to vote early in the May 7th election. There's ballot uh, has several proposals, including one that would increase the homestead exemption amount from twenty five to forty thousand dollars. This is approved. It's expected to save homeowners an average of one hundred seventy six dollars on their property tax bill. We have more details about the ballot on KSAT.com. And their season may be over. However, the Spurs are making headlines this morning. San Antonio may be uh, the, the team, but the NBA franchise is looking to move some of its home games beyond city limits and even into other countries. So Bear County owns the Spurs home court, the AT&T Center, and has a deal with the team that only allows up to two home games outside of that center per season. However, County Judge Nelson Wolf says the team wants to double that limit for the next two seasons with two international home games and two more within 100 miles. Wolf says the Spurs have mentioned playing in Monterey, Mexico City and at the Alamo Dome as possibilities and that while they haven't specified it, Austin is the other city they would like to include. San Antonio's only Nestle Toll House Cafe closing its doors permanently after a tough financial blow from the COVID-19 pandemic. The shop located off 1604 had a huge outpouring of support back in November of 2020 to try to keep the doors open. It allowed owner Sherry Ramirez to do just that throughout all of 2021. However, rising costs of supplies, labor and delays in the supply chain, she says are forcing her hand. Just uh, at a point right now that I, I, I just don't see us recovering uh, from all that COVID has brought to us. While San Antonio's standalone Nestle Toll House Cafe is closing, there's still an open location out of on Universal City off Pat Booker Road. Across the country, manufacturing across the country is still growing, but it's all, the slowest pace in more than a year and a half. The Institute for Supply Management's latest index of factor Factory activity fell last month to its lowest reading since September of 2020. Tight supply chains and workers leaving their jobs both contributing to the decline. Get ready to say goodbye to COVID refunds on Airbnb. As of May 31st, customers will no longer be able to get their money back if they cancel for virus-related reasons. The policy has been in place since March of 2020. And Google is rolling out some new travel-related updates. There's a new tool that lets users track flight prices between two cities for up to six months. There's also detailed information about places to stay within certain driving distances. You just need an address or a landmark to get started. If you're still looking for a Mother's Day gift, something simple, here's an idea. A 228-carat pear-shaped diamond known appropriately as the rock will hit the auction block next week. It's one of the largest white diamonds to ever come up for auction. It's estimated to sell between 20 and 30 million dollars. Mike, you might be able to do this for Bonnie on installment plans. <laughs> we'll let you know the details later. 100 bucks a month now till kingdom come. Sure, exactly. <laughs> right now, 610, about 74 degrees. And much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including a California startup company that successfully used a helicopter to catch a rocket in midair. We're going to have that story a little later on. And just ahead, the very latest in the war in Eastern Europe, a senior U.S. official warning Russia plans to annex much of Eastern Ukraine later this month. And taking a look outside with live cans, starting off humid at 74 degrees, and things will warm up later this afternoon and really warm up by the end of the week. We'll be right back.
614 now to the war in Ukraine and new concerns this morning that Vladimir Putin may officially declare war next week. The announcement could allow him to send more troops to the front lines. Meanwhile, we're getting a new view of what it's like to live underground for weeks in the war zone. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest. Today, President Biden visits a Lockheed Martin facility in Alabama that produces Javelin anti-tank missiles. The U.S. has sent more than 5,500 of them to Ukraine, a crucial weapon in the war effort. The president pushing Congress to pass his $33 billion aid package for Ukraine. Republicans now signaling they may be ready to support the plan as long as Democrats hold off adding other provisions, such as COVID funding. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, that steel plant in Mariupol, where potentially hundreds of people remain trapped under bombardment by the Russians. Some were able to evacuate Sunday, but those evacuations were halted yesterday. But the Ukrainians, with some victories of their own, saying a drone took out these Russian patrol boats, and now Ukraine is reporting some territorial gains near Kharkiv. Officials now bracing for an announcement from Vladimir Putin next Monday, May 9th, a Russian holiday commemorating the victory over Nazi Germany. There are fears Putin could use that holiday to officially declare war on Ukraine, a term Moscow has not used thus far. It would allow Putin to send more conscripts to the front lines where a U.S. official describes Russian progress as anemic. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also igniting outrage Monday, claiming Adolf Hitler was part Jewish. An attempt to justify Russia's false claim that it's fighting to denazify Ukraine, even though Ukraine's president is Jewish. The State Department said Lavrov's comments prove there's no floor when it comes to how low the Kremlin will go. Israel calling those comments unforgivable. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. It's now 616. And looking out at those trans guy cameras, things look okay so far. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. I was giving Mark uh, the thumbs up since he's uh, right over here in my peripheral vision. We are looking like we are in great shape right now. 37 at Houston, 37 at Pecan Valley. Thankfully, this morning is looking a lot better than Monday. But uh, we are seeing just a few more folks out there. 35 at 37. You can see people getting their morning started. We're getting closer to that morning rush hour. But just remember, no need to rush out the door because there are basically no problems. But be on the lookout because stalls are popping up and I think I just jinxed ourselves. Our map is now picking up some crashes. We're going to check that out in just a moment and find out how that's impacting the commute. But where we're seeing that is right there along 35 near 410. And then we're seeing something happening over here off of I-10. Again, we'll find out what's going on there as the morning does progress. But let's take you in because we do have a stall vehicle here off I-35 northbound at US-90. Now, up until now, stalls have been the problem. As you see over here, this one off of I-10 and those westbound lanes are Map now detecting that as a crash. So we will check with our friends over at Transguide to find out what the conditions look like at this hour. But as always, make sure you are planned uh, planning ahead because over here off I-37 in Atascosa County, there will also be some bridge work that's current and should be wrapping up on Thursday. This should say May 5th, or pardon me. So we will get that changed up. But keep in mind that is from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. There is a single northbound main lane closure at Atascosa River. So we'll watch it closely. But as always, make sure you have your phones handy. Open that camera app and tap it once right in the center at that QR code. That'll take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that will have the latest on anything that could be impacting your morning commute and always the latest on those closures that are taking place in your area. Guys, thank you, Stephen. If you're just now tuning in, waking up to GMSA, Mike has an update on what could be a very steamy weekend around South Texas. Yeah. Steamy this morning, too. Yeah. yeah, that humidity. And then it's just going to be, like you mentioned earlier this morning, kind of turning the broiler on this weekend and the hottest, the hottest we're, we've seen so far this year. 73 degrees. Uh, we're going to stay steady where we are right now. Maybe some mist. Haven't seen any yet. No reports of it. But just with all this humidity out there, just kind of don't be surprised, I guess I should say, that if you see some mist this morning. And then 87 for a high temperature today, which is hot and humid. We are going to be about four degrees above normal. Great picture. This was uh, from Bernie. It had obviously some breaks in the clouds. And uh, I love the uh, reference to the song Aquarius when Jupiter aligns with Mars uh, and also Venus is throwing if we could see off to the without these clouds out here Venus and Jupiter are almost right on top of each other and then Mars and also uh, Saturn are out there but obviously we got some clouds can't see it right now visibility there are hints 
of fog in places down around Port SA, Stinson, Castroville, and then over toward Uvalde. But we've got enough of a breeze to help prevent some of that fog. Just again, be if there's if we have the winds drop off, you might see a slight bit of fog to develop and as well as some of that mist out there. Not any big, big deal at all this morning. Temperatures we're in the uh, mid 70s right now and may fluctuate a couple of degrees over the course of the next few hours and then we'll see some sunshine thrown in just a little bit by late morning. Low clouds are going to be kind of tough to break up and then we'll see a bit more sunshine later on this afternoon. That's going to help to heat us up to 87 degrees and of course we are going to be seeing the humidity which will add to those temperatures. Now we get kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. And then tonight we have to watch out for those thunderstorms developing off a of disturbance coming in here from the mountains of Mexico. And some of those storms could be on the strong, potentially severe side. Del Rio, uh, Eagle Pass up toward Rock Springs. And this is going to be into the uh, evening hours tonight. And then they will start to die off. Then we do the same thing tomorrow. Lots of clouds starting off in the morning and then some sunshine in the afternoon. We have to watch out for a few of those thunderstorms to develop out there to the west a little bit further into the hill country than by tomorrow evening. Going further into the future, there's those storms tomorrow evening, then overnight into Thursday. And we'll have to watch out for some of those thunderstorms and especially off to the north and east on Thursday. After that, we clear on out and that's when things really start to heat up around here. So once again, Again, we have the threat for just a couple of isolated storms off to the west tonight. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. An isolated tornado can't be ruled out, but not very likely. And then tomorrow, that threat moves a little bit further to the east. And then on Thursday, the threat covers the about the northeastern half of our viewing area right there along 10 and 37 does include San Antonio and this would be on Thursday and then behind that like I said we clear on out and that's when things really heat up we stay hot the next couple of days but then again get hot and then some by the weekend 80 at noon mostly cloudy skies high temperature today makes it up to 87 with partly sunny skies tonight. We have to watch out for a couple of those stray thunderstorms out to the west. Same thing tomorrow night and then Thursday uh, upper mid to upper 80s all three days. Friday 96. I mean, just a cranking up the heat there and then kick it up another couple of notches going for triple digits Saturday and Sunday. Obviously, that is one thermometer out there at the airport in your backyard, maybe even warmer than that, of course, take into account over there toward the, uh, the Rio Grande Valley. But it's going to be a hot, hot Mother's Day. Yeah, you were talking about potentially wilted bouquets. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And the record on Saturday is 100. OK. Memory serves me right, 102 on Sunday. So we'll be close to that. Wow. Close to the record on Friday as well. OK. okay. We'll keep the flowers Some in the fridge or at least inside the house for now. Yes. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. 622, about 74 degrees. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're going to introduce you to an English teacher at Reagan High School. He works to make his students feel at home in his classroom, and he is KSET's Educator of the Month. You can hear his story later this morning at 9 a.m. We'll be right back. I've got moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzy. Things are getting clearer. I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's all me. Nothing and me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is everything. Achieve clearer skin with Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin in four months. Of those, nearly nine out of ten sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzy is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. It's my moment, so I just gotta say. Nothing is everything. Sky may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Talk to your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. 
625 Houston Astros in action yesterday with Jose Altuve back in action at Minute Maid Park after being out with an injury. They were taking on the Seattle Mariners. Both squads went scoreless in the first three innings. Stroh's finally got some offense going in the fourth. Seattle never could find any rhythm. Stroh's get the shutout, beating the Mariners three to nothing with the win. Houston, Seattle both sit at 12 and 11 on the season. The Mariners will try to redeem themselves against the Astros tonight. That game set for 7-10 in Houston. Rangers are in action later today. They've got a road matchup with the Philadelphia Phillies. Texas currently sits at 8 and 14 on the season, taking last place in the American League West. Rangers Phillies set for 5:45 today in Philadelphia. And time now, 626 and about 74 degrees out there. Ahead in our next half hour, GMSA, the very latest on an early morning shooting in southeast Bear County. At least one person is dead. We're going to tell you everything we know so far. The day is off to a disturbing start here in southeast Bear County. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Sheriff's detectives are investigating the shooting death of a man overnight. I'll tell you more about it. A man is dead after he was shot at a Westside convenience store late last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What police are saying about the shooter. And a scary scene on San Antonio's north side. One woman tied up, another one robbed. We're going to have the details. I'm ABC's Justin Finch here in Washington following an apparent leak of a Supreme Court draft opinion that could have major consequences for abortion rights. More on that coming up. Morning clouds, lots of humidity, and as we look ahead to the Mother's Day week, and if you have a swim pool, you're about to become the most popular person on the block. <laughs> and good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 3rd. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, not a bad idea to visit the pool on Mother's Day. It's going to be a hot one. Now, Mike says we are going to be near record-breaking territory, at least one out of the two days of the weekend. Yeah, with the forecast, uh, one day would tie a record and close to it the other couple of days. So, I mean, we're still on the, the hot side. And today, you know, in the upper mid upper uh, 80s above normal and same thing the next couple of days, then really start to crank up the heat on the high. So first of all, as Mark was talking about, we've got lots of clouds out there. It is very, very humid. As a matter of fact, humidity and temperatures are up just a couple of notches compared to yesterday. Temperature is 75 degrees. The dew point, the measure moisture in the atmosphere is up to 71. Oh, you definitely feel it when you step outside. Wind out of the southeast at seven miles per hour, and all these temperatures are well, well, with the exception of Lost Maples, but averaging in the mid 70s right now. The average low temperature is 63, so 10, 15 degrees above normal. Molds on the high side, and oak. Finally, hopefully, we're done with that season. That, along with pecan and grass, are on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about 45 minutes or so. Cloudy. You might run into some mist this morning. Haven't seen a lot of it. None of us saw anything coming into work this morning, but just uh, don't be surprised by that. And even a couple of damp spots on the roads, warm and humid otherwise. And then we're going to have partly sunny skies and a couple of storms we have to watch out for later on tonight out to the west. And then that's going to be the situation again tomorrow night as well as Thursday night. It's going to be hot and humid. Then we get into the weekend, Friday in the weekend, plenty of sunshine and it's going to be really, really hot. Like we're talking about, we are looking at, um, well, close to some record high temperatures, including some triple digits going in here toward the weekend. We'll get it all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, been pretty quiet. It has. In the neck of the woods this morning. You know, it has, Mike. Thankfully, we have not spotted any issues from these shots at Trans Guide. Let's get a look around town. 410 at Broadway. We are seeing traffic moving there without any trouble, and we have 281 at Bassey. Again, a pretty quiet morning so far for our commuters that have to wake up early and get their day started. But uh, we did talk about our map here. We saw some crashes. Uh, we told you about this one on 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Those crashes, I talked to our friends over at Transguide, may have been a fluke on our map. So thankfully, it's nothing major. It's just a stalled vehicle. But that seems to be the trending problem right now. 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Let's take a drive over here because we have this stall off I-35 northbound at US-90. Now, uh, not looking good here in the northbound lanes because we are seeing a slight slowdown in that direction. And we have one final drive up over here to I-10 westbound at Wurzbach Road. So again, uh, no stalls 
calls. Uh, no crashes to report at this hour. Thankfully, just some stalls, but make sure that you move over or slow down. Also, no need to rush out the door if your destination is the Alamo City. You can see that it's pretty much green across the board, with the exception of Bulverde. A 28 minute drive time in those southbound lanes coming in on 281 to the Alamo City. Other than that, one last look around town. There's 35 at 37. Traffic is moving through that area without any trouble, but will it stay that way for long? We'll continue to watch the roads closely, but make sure you do the same. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Sheriff's detectives want to know what went on behind closed doors at a southeast Bear County home. It led to the shooting death of a man overnight. Now, Katrina Weber is live where that investigation is going on along Loop 107 near Highway 87. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that investigators don't have a lot of information. Where do they go from here? Well, that is right. Uh, they tell me that they're counting on a woman who they have in custody for some answers. Someone who they're calling a witness at this point. Other than that, they will be looking at any physical evidence they've collected. But we saw them as they search for that both in and around the home. The Bear County Sheriff's Office got the call after 1.30 this morning, got to this home on Loop 107 and found the man dead from several gunshot wounds. They told me a relative who lives nearby is the one who called 911. However, detectives also said that there was a woman in the home at the time, the one who they're calling a witness. Right now, though, it seems they have not gotten a lot of information for her, from her. Detectives told me that they have no description of the shooter or any identifying information about a car that was possibly involved. Now, they say this investigation is still very much in the beginning stages. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police interviewing witnesses hoping to find the man responsible for shooting and killing a man at a West Side convenience store last night. It happened at West Commerce and 24th Street, right across the street from Our Lady of the Lake University. Sarah Costa is live at that location with the latest. Sarah. Good morning, Mark, and police still have not released the name of the man who was shot and killed. All the information they have on, on him at this point is that he was in his 30s, but let's take a look at some video from last night when police were still on scene. SAPD says they got the call around 10:15 for a man who had been shot at this location. When they arrived, they found a man with two gunshot wounds, one to his leg, another to his torso. He was rushed to University Hospital where he later died from those injuries. Police say the shooter ran off and has still not been found at this time right now. Police have little information on the suspect, just that he is a man. And also to give you a better idea of where the shooting took place, this is also the same location where a six-year-old girl was shot and killed around this time last year on Mother's Day weekend during a car meetup. Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a robbery on the city's north side. Now, it happened around 1.30 this morning at an apartment complex on Parliament Street, not far from Churchill High School. That's where officers say one, a woman in her 20s was at home when two men she knew came over. She says they tied her up and forced her to call her friend, another woman in her 20s, to have her come to that apartment. Now, when she got there, the two men reportedly stole her vehicle. Eventually, police caught up with the two suspects who crashed the stolen car car over on Loop 410 near Medina Base Road. Both of the men were arrested. No one was hurt in that incident. 637 bombshell news from the United States Supreme Court. An apparent leak of a majority draft opinion indicating the court appears poised to overturn Roe versus Wade. The 1973 Supreme Court decision granting the constitutional right to an abortion in the U.S. News of that leak is sending shockwaves across the country and is driving demonstrators to gather outside the high court. ABC's Justin Fitch is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. Those following the Supreme Court say a leak of this magnitude is in itself remarkable and caution. It's not the final word yet. Still, those on both sides of abortion rights see this as a major flashpoint in the Roe versus Wade debate and demonstrations have already begun. This morning, tensions high outside the U.S. Supreme Court following a leaked draft opinion in a case that could determine the future of Roe versus Wade and abortion rights across the country. The protests coming after the website Politico reporting it obtained documents from a person familiar with the court's proceedings. Those documents labeled a first draft of the opinion in a case challenging Mississippi's ban on abortion after 15 weeks. 
But in that draft, Justice Samuel Alito, the opinion's apparent author, writes Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. It was circulated in the court as a first draft by Justice Alito in February, dated February 10th. Uh, So it is possible there have been some changes since then. The draft opinion also citing Planned Parenthood versus Casey. The 1992 case affirmed Roe's finding of a constitutional right to abortion services. Justice Alito on the court 6-3 conservative majority writing, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Planned Parenthood tweeting, let's be clear, this is a draft opinion. It's outrageous. It's unprecedented, but it's not final. Abortion is your right and is still legal. The draft opinion leak comes as states nationwide have begun passing restrictive abortion measures. Many congressional Democrats now calling for Congress to pass legislation to protect abortion rights by codifying them into federal law. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And today is your last day to vote early in the May 7th election. On the ballot are several proposals, including one that would increase the homestead exemption amount from $25,000 to $40,000. If this is approved, it is expected to save homeowners an average of $176 on their property tax bill. We have more details about the ballot on our website at KSAT.com. Many teachers in San Antonio and across the state are leaving classrooms. Many attribute the move to feeling overwhelmed and overworked. In fact, new data shows an alarming amount of educators are breaking their employment contracts before the end of the school year. You can read more about this story over on KSAT.com. And KSAT's newest podcast, South Texas Crime Stories, returns today. Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman host the show about crimes that have taken place in San Antonio or South Texas. This week's episode all about a case that shocked many of us back in the late 90s here, the murder of Monica Rizzo. Rizzo disappeared back in May of 1997, but wasn't reported missing until an anonymous tipster told police her bones were buried in her backyard. A search would reveal that hundreds of bones were found. South Texas Crime Stories Episode 2, The Boneyard, comes out later this morning. And by scanning this QR code on your screen right now, you can listen to the episodes, subscribe to the podcast or the newsletter. And record low water levels at Lake Mead in Nevada, the country's largest reservoir, resulted in a grisly discovery over the weekend. A body in a barrel. Police say a person visiting the lake Sunday found the barrel and could see the remains inside because the barrel was corroded. Investigators believe it's the body of a homicide victim from the 1980s, although autopsy results are still pending. Authorities say a suspect in the deadly shootings of a young woman, a teenage girl, at an Arizona apartment complex has been arrested right here in Texas. Casa Grande, Arizona police say 18-year-old Terrence Xavier Santa Stephen was taken into custody Saturday night in Pflugerville near Austin. 17-year-old Danielle Marietta and 18-year-old Leslie Cota were found shot multiple times back on April 24th with nearly 30 bullet casings recovered there at the scene. The two were rushed to an Arizona hospital where they died from their injuries. It's still unclear what led up to the shootings. And it's a first of its kind launch that's out of this world. California startup company Rocket Lab has successfully used a helicopter to catch a falling rocket in midair. It then ended up in the ocean off New Zealand. Now, the company is hoping to launch satellites into space faster and cheaper than its competitors. Although the helicopter did not hold on to the rocket, the startup still considers the catch a monumental step forward. Right now, 642, about 74 degrees. And just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we're going to have some pro tips for getting your resume in top shape. Welcome back at 645. Experts say we are in the middle of the great resignation with a record number of workers leaving their jobs. In fact, a recent report from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics revealed that 4.3 million Americans quit their jobs last August alone. While it's clearly a job seekers market, your resume may ultimately determine whether you're hired. Ursula Perry reports on some common resume mistakes. Hello. Hello, how are you today? (laughs) Want to land that dream job? Don't let your resume get in the way. A common mistake is typos. One survey found 58% of resumes have errors in them. So have someone else read over your document to make sure you aren't overlooking any blunders. Another mistake, lying. 
85% of hiring managers say they have found lies on resumes that they've received. Also, make sure your resume isn't too long. My resume should be long enough so that people get a sense of who I am, but not too long so that people get bored with me. It depends how much you got it to how much you got to tell. So I would say like around three pages. Three pages, maybe. Unless you're applying for an executive position, it shouldn't be longer than a page. Not including your COVID vaccination status on your resume may also be a mistake. In one survey, 33% of hiring managers said that they will eliminate resumes that don't have an applicant status. And missing contact information can also cost you. Make sure you have your name, address, personal email, and phone number clearly visible at the top of the document. Another common mistake is sharing confidential information about your previous employer. Trade secrets, for example. Google executives say five to 10% of the information on resumes they receive contains that kind of information and is subject to an automatic rejection for the job. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Ursula. Let's get a look at 35 in division. We are spotting a little bit of congestion in that area. Let's get a wider look from Transguide. You can see that vehicles are moving through there, but not very fast. Now, typically we don't spot these types of slowdowns until maybe closer to seven, but we are in that morning rush hour. So be prepared. 22 miles per hour is what you can expect for that travel time here on I-35 northbound at division, but also be on the lookout because we did tell you about that stall in those northbound lanes here near Theo Avenue and US 90. So watch out. Thankfully, stall have been the only issue we've been spotting 281 northbound at Hildebrand Avenue is the latest one we are adding to our list. And of course, we told you about this stall over here. I 10 westbound at Wurzbach Road. But other than that, as we get a wide look at the map, no other problems to report just yet. But seeing the slowdowns already taking place 1604 as well as US 90 near 1604. So just remember to take it easy out on the roads. Patience is your friend, especially here on 35 at Division Guys. Yes, patience. Thanks, this, Stephen. Also, this, this duck will prove it's a genius if it returns this weekend when it's right? hotter than heck around here, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, patience is your friend, and the, the person with the pool is your friend yeah. this weekend. Yeah. yeah, duck's got the right idea there, so find yeah, Anybody by the pool is like, going to be a lucky duck this mm -hmm. weekend. Hey! Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'll be here the rest of the week, folks. Uh, yeah, we got lots of humidity, lots of clouds out there. It looks like we're trying to see a few lighter spots in the clouds, but we're not really going to see much of any sunshine until late this morning, and then... Uh, into this afternoon. Humidity dew point temperatures are well, you get above 60, you feel it. You get above 70, you really feel it. And that's the situation, especially around Stinson with the dew point of 74 degrees. And you know, you get around 73, 74. It's when your glasses just fog up when you go outside from air conditioning into all this humidity. And those numbers, dew points are up uh, three, five, seven degrees compared to this time yesterday. So doesn't seem like a heck of a lot, but when you're talking about dew points up in the 70s, two, three degrees makes a whole lot of difference. We are going to stay pretty steady for the next couple of hours. Lots of clouds, and then we'll start to see some sunshine by late this morning. We get up into the uh, upper 70s, 80 at noon then, and we'll top off later on this afternoon, getting up to 87 degrees with more sunshine thrown on in today. And then clouds come back in here tonight, and we'll also have to watch out tonight for some thunderstorms to develop coming in here off the mountains of Mexico and moving into our western counties. And some of those could be on the strong, potentially severe side for Valverde going in toward uh, Edwards County, Kinney County later on tonight. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. And an isolated tornado can't be ruled out. Not very likely, though. And then we go into tomorrow and we're going to be dealing with the same thing with clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon, and then also some of those thunderstorms trying to develop out there in our western counties a little bit further into the hill country tomorrow. And then we go into uh, Thursday. And that's going to be situation once again. Low temperatures over the next few days are going to be staying 10 degrees at least above normal. High temperatures over the next few days are going to be staying uh, anywhere from 5, 10, 15 degrees or more above normal. And yep, we're looking at uh, 100s for weekend forecast around here. As far as the uh, severe threat, 
We are looking at that once again on Thursday with some more showers and a few thunderstorms in the overnight hours and then later on in the afternoon. But then we get somewhat of a front moving on through here. That's going to clear things out and that then sets us up for that really hot weekend. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 87, so about three, four degrees above normal. We stay mid upper 80s the next couple of days with those evening thunderstorms around here 96 on Friday and then triple digit temperatures over the weekend. Grin and Barrett, find that pool. He yes, said so grin and Barrett find that pool. Yes, we we're grinning. We're grinning best we can Mike. 651 <laughs> about 74 degrees. And are you looking to do some spring cleaning? There are a lot of reasons why you should declutter and deep clean. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you why experts say a tidy home can put you in a better mood. Outside with live cam as we get your Tuesday rolling here on GMSA. We'll wrap things up after this. Slow moving traffic here at I-35 at Division 655. Let's get one last look at your early morning drive. You can see that we do have vehicles that are moving through there at 16 miles per hour in those northbound lanes at Division Avenue. But be on the lookout. Stalls here off 35 and we have one over here off 281 northbound at Hildebrand as well as I-10 westbound at Wurzbach Road. But thankfully, no need to rush out the door, but expect a drive time of 30 minutes. 281 southbound coming in from Bulverde, Mike. Hey, everybody. Hey, the metropolitan area is in the 70s. We actually dropped down 1 degree, 74 degrees, 69 lost maples, but other Otherwise, um, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. It's going to be a hot one today, up to 87 and partly sunny skies. We do have that chance for a couple of severe storms well out to the west then later on tonight, and we'll be on the lookout for that. Then the next couple of evenings, same situation. Then we get into the weekend. Wow. I'm just going to let that sit up there and let you. <laughs> We're going to let that yeah. let there sit there and kind of marinate under the broiler? Yes. I feel it's okay, too hot. Thank you, Mike. Well, we'll be prepared. <laughs> It's okay. Thanks for joining us today. Have a good day. See you back here at 9.